The first Hornby Class 50 was introduced in 2003 and since then it has acquired a large base of modelling fans with the releases that followed. In this video I want to cover the range up to the current day. It's time to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's review. We're going to start today's session with looking at the range of Class 50s since 2003, followed by an unboxing of one of the DCC sound equipped versions. We'll then do a close up view of that model and compare it to a custom weathered version of one of the first Class 50 models. For the running session, we will compare the factory equipped model with the third party sound offering. We'll then get into the summary, scoring and recommendation section, which excludes the 2020 models. I'll cover these separately and then finish up with a wish list for a 20 year anniversary version of the Class 50 if Hornby were to consider doing that. OK, let's get underway. So here we have the first uh, set of models uh, of the Class 50 that were produced by Hornby in the years 2003 to 2006. And they did produce quite a few models in this time frame, as you can see. And they did cover uh, a good range of different liveries as well. So I've marked out there one of the models, the R2349, uh, which is the Arc Royal. Uh, that's one of the models we'll actually be featuring today on this video. And we've got a custom weathered version of that with a custom sound in it. And so we will be comparing that to an off the shelf version uh, from Hornby, which is on the next slide. So here we've got the models that were created in the 2007 to 2020 uh, timeframe and just marking out the one that we're going to do the unboxing on there which is the 2901XS uh, Illustrious uh, and this came with factory fitted uh, DCC sound. Um, physically it's, it's remarkably similar to the Arc Royal uh, and really the main differences there will be the, the weathering and the sound. So you can see the other models there up to the current day and as I mentioned the last two models which are the 2020 models in the GBRF uh, rail freight uh, livery I'm going to cover those kind of separately at the end. Uh, there was some differences and some issues with those models. Uh, they're not applicable to the others, so I will cover them separately uh, at the end of the video. Okay, hi, welcome to the unboxing for the Class 50. So I've actually got two Class 50 models here that we're going to take a look at. And they come from different date ranges. Uh, the one we'll take the closest look at is the newest one, uh, which is the... Um, the 2901 XS which has got uh, a digital sound out of the box factory fitted and the other one we'll actually do a comparison against is an older model uh, which actually dates back to 2003 and it's the 2349 the Arc Royal and the reason I wanted this I actually got this model first and it has uh, DCC sound added and it also has some weathering added so just to give you an idea of what um, it would be to, to add those to one of these models and we'll do um, there's a running session on this as well and we'll take a, a look at that. So this is the one we're going to take a close and do the unboxing with which is the newest as I said and uh, there's not many of these available uh, with DCC sound uh, fitted. Uh, there was 30 models in all made over the last 20 years by Hornby of the class 50 and they come in a variety of liveries. I, I, my preference is this particular livery which is the BR Blue with the large logo. Uh, you can get them in the BR Blue, BR Green, uh, the Network uh, Southeast livery, the Dutch livery and most recently in the GBRF uh, rail freight livery. Uh, the, the most of the 2020 models are in that livery. Uh, so this, but this one is, as I said, it is my favourite and, and you can get a lot of use out of this particular livery I believe. So let's take a look at this one. We'll put the other one to one side and, and uh, we'll take a look at that a little bit later on in terms of some of the side by side view. Uh, let's take a look at this guy. So this is the typical box uh, for uh, these models. Uh, they, they all of the kind of super detailed diesel locomotives come in this type of packaging from Hornby. It has been the kind of classic packaging they've used. So if you've never seen one of these before, uh, there she is uh, in, in the box. And let's see what we've got. So it does come with the two manuals, uh, the kind of regular uh, maintenance manual that you get, typical for any Hornby locomotive, and the digital sound manual as well. Uh, so uh, this is full DCC sound, it's not TTS, so um, 
uh, you will be able to get the uh, capabilities on this and uh, it is based on a Loxon decoder that looks of things and you've got your function tables um, in there and we should have our list of actual functions here so typical set of functions there a relatively small number I guess uh, from what we may be used to today uh, but this model does be, uh, date back to 2010 uh, so it's got a Loxon 3.5 decoder in there. So um, now the, the, the version, you will see the, the other version I have that has the custom sound. That is a Loxon 4 decoder and a different speaker. And we'll probably see later on what difference that makes. So this packaging um, I do like pretty well. Um, we'll take the, the kind of end pieces off. And this little piece here, I think the other end piece is in the box. Um, and this top cover. So it's in a kind of a two-part foam, uh, which I think is pretty good. It's pretty robust. Um, now, normally these don't come with the couplers installed, and there's an extra little piece of foam at the end there, but this one actually does have the coupler, so I've left that on there. Uh, it does come with a detailing kit, um, and there's actually a snowplow in this detailing kit, along with some piping, uh, the extra coupler. Uh, there's actually got the two couplers in here and uh, some other extra detail in there. So uh, that's just a standard detailing kit, so that's not even open to that particular one. Which is, uh, so this model is 10 years old, but it's absolutely immaculate, so I was really pleased to pick it up. Um, so it comes off like that, so I think it's a very nice form of packaging. It's, I think it's pretty good, it gives a lot of support at either end. Now this model, I have to say, is extremely heavy. Um, so this model weighs in at a total of 768 grams. And that's the kind of weight level of the Hatton's Class 66, for example, which would be seen as a, a very heavy locomotive. This is the heaviest Hornby locomotive I've ever run on my layout, that's for sure. Um, that's, a, that's a fairly weighty, that's 200 grams more than the typical um, locomotive from, say, Backman, like a Blackman Class 66 would be about 200 grams lighter than that. So this is a really heavy locomotive. Um, and I suppose it does give some really good performance as well uh, in line with, with, with that. So let's just take the, the packaging out of the way. Okay, so let's take a closer look. So, so it, it really does feel heavy in the hand. There's no doubt about it. This, this, you can feel the weight of this guy. Um, so this is the uh, 50037, the illustrious. Um, and it's really in, in really good condition. As I said, it's, it's, this is... Uh, relatively new model. I think the owner of this had it just stored away and really hadn't uh, run the model very much. So very pleased to pick a model like that up. Uh, a couple of the features I'll talk about, and we will do the usual, um, uh, you know, flyby and, uh, um, and 360 view of this. Um, some of the typical features of the Class 50, it does have these little doors that open. You can see that on either side. And you'll, you'll be familiar with that from the, the Class 43 uh, super detail models from Hornby as well, they have the same sort of feature. And another feature it has, which I, I don't, to be honest, I, I'm not a huge fan of, and, and no pun intended, it's the operating fan up here on the roof. So there's an actual belt, uh, drive belt that comes from the motor that drives this. Now that belt actually uh, puts a huge load on the motor, and, uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. It, it's not an issue um, really with the DC, you'll be drawing some more current um, with the DC, C controller that it has installed that won't be an issue but if you were using a TTS controller that can be a problem and I'll talk about that a little bit later on uh, so you, you it, it, to be honest if you are going to run this with TTS I would recommend disconnecting the drive belt for this and saving your TTS controller from from blowing up um, because think of it you're, you are pulling already you're pulling a 760 gram locomotive a rake of coaches and you've got this extra load as well on the locomotive so once you start doing any sort of speed, uh, you're going to blow your, your TTS decoder if you leave that connected. Um, on the front here, you've got the, the lighting. So it does have directional lighting. as these headlights at the top and the directional lights here. And um, it doesn't have cab lights and it doesn't have a fitted driver, unfortunately. Uh, typically, none of the Hornby locomotives would have either of those. So that is a, a little bit unfortunate. Um, it does have spring buffers, quite nice spring buffers there. Uh, overall, it does have a, uh, I would say, a good level of detail. The, the, the bogey detail is, is good. It's sharp and well, well picked out. Uh, I think, again, the paintwork and, and lettering is really good. And uh, the, the large blue logo, uh, which we're looking for. 
Um, so it and it's a, it's a it's a very sharp. It looks like a very sharp tool. I'm not sure when the the tooling for this particular locomotive um, well, was created, but there's a there's a very sharp uh, sharpness about the detail on it, uh, so which would kind of indicate a pretty new tool for this particular model. Um, and the, and these 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 are actually metal sprung buffers as well, just to to bring that emphasize that as well. A bit of cab detail in there as well. You can see the seats and uh, some of the instruments. Uh, so that's pretty good. Some nice wipers. Um, and overall, it, it's a very effective and we're, uh, well kitted out uh, looking motive, uh, lo locomotive in line with, I suppose, the super detailed branding that would, would go with, with these locomotives from Hornby. Uh, certainly, they don't use that term too much these days, but that would have been the case when they were uh, selling this particular uh, genre of, of model. Metal handrails at the side there as well. So it's, 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 well, it's a well kitted out model. It's, um, it's really heavy. <laughs> and um, uh, I think it has got a really good level of detail so it lives up to its name and I think uh, it, it does look really good and I, I do like this model uh, physically it's it's roughly the same size as a class 66 so I actually put this side by side with um, a class 66 and they really look very similar uh, Backman class 66 the difference being of course the weight the 200 grams this is so much heavier um, if we look underneath here uh, just taking a look at uh, the power pickups um it looks like it's got all bogey pickup on all all the all of the wheels there from what i can see and it's contacts on all of them so that's good that's a good sign um and i think you know the the running performance of these uh, is um has a very good reputation i think that's uh, anybody who's had one of these models historically uh either running them under dc or dcc will have had a very pretty well a good experience and uh, I think we'll see that in the running session. Um, uh, you know that that extra weight really gives you a fantastic uh, grip on the track, um, fantastic connectivity because you've got the all all, all uh, wheel pickup, and um, and then a really good pulling power uh, to pull very large rakes. So it's in keeping with its real life um, locomotive, I guess. And uh, I think so far this this looks really good. So I think the next thing we'll do is we'll do a little bit more of a close-up, we'll do a 360 view and then we'll do, and we'll do that for both locomotives so we can uh, kind of do a side by side. Really the main differences uh, between the two will be the weathering and then when we're actually doing the running session the other main difference will be uh, the actual sound and there is a quite a difference in the sound and uh, so um, I think we'll see that during the running session for we'll do a short running session for each of them so we can get a feel for the relative difference on the side on the sound side okay so but this is really good I, i'm really pleased to pick this up as i said and uh, it's great to have a model that's you know 10 year old model that, that's in really good condition like this so very pleased with that okay let's go to this the detailed uh, close-up view and uh, 360 view and then we'll get into the running session So now we're going to take a close-up view of the two models actually that we're looking at today. Uh, the first one here is the Illustrious, which is the newer of the two. It's the one we've done the unboxing with. And um, you can kind of see the doors there with the handrails, the safety stickers, uh, the large blue logo, and that uh, the nameplate there. And this is a very clean model. I um, say this model is uh, 10 years old as it stands, and a very clean model. I suppose one comment I'd make is the roof, and we'll see it only do the 360 view. It probably is a little bit bland, and that's on the weathered version. I think people, they added the weathering to the roof, and I think that was the reason they did it, because it's just a little bit bland. So if there's one element of the model, I suppose, that could do with improvement, I think it's maybe on the roof. From a detailed perspective, it is a roof. Some nice fans there. And again, the front, uh, the opening doors and the front cab. And there's, there's some detail in the cab as well, which is pretty good. Uh, this is giving us the uh, the 360 kind of flyby view, uh, which allows us to see the ends of the locomotive as well, which is pretty good. Uh, now you can see the roof there again, and as I said, there's only really one separately fitted, fitted part there, and I think it could it does have the the fan, obviously the rotating fan, but you don't really get to see that unless you're looking straight down onto it. So that's a kind of a detail that's lost. So I think there is maybe room for a little bit of improvement there on, in terms of the roof detail. Uh, you've got the headlights at the front there and the, the, the front wipers, etc. And the, the, the sprung buffers, as I mentioned, at the front, as we saw in the unboxing. 
So very nice looking locomotive, there's no doubt about it. It is roughly the same length as a Class 66, so it's that kind of dimension, so it gives you that kind of view of size. And uh, I think one of the issues, I think, from a sound perspective is really there should be more provision made for, for the, a larger speaker, for example, in one of these models. I think that could be done, and that's, that's the kind of recommendation I will show at the very end. Okay, now we're going to take a separate look at the the older models, the 2003 model, the Arc Royal, which does have the weathering on the roof. Now, interesting, they didn't put any weathering elsewhere on the body. It probably could have done with some uh, weathering on the bogies there on the under, underside. So you can see it there on the chimneys. Uh, you've got the weathering, and I think it does add a little bit to the model. Um, you can see that, that kind of bland roof, it does take away from that and, and adds to it and, and just makes the model perhaps a little bit more interesting. What's missing here, as I said, is, is they haven't gone all out and added additional weathering around the body, which I think would have been pretty useful and interesting to see. So we'll do the 360 view on this again. This gives a better view of the, the, the weathering to the roof. And again, it was focused on around the, the chimney areas there, uh, around the fan as well. And um, it just gives that extra level of detail. And um, I think that that is probably helpful um, in, in terms of the model. But they just, unfortunately, the weathering on this model is, is I would say, incomplete. Uh, again, just something to note, this is again a uh, an 18-year-old model, and look at the condition of it. And again, the performance of this model is absolutely superb as well. I suppose it's a credit to its <laughs> its previous owners, and um, but I think it does go back to the build quality of these models as well. It's very, very good. And I think that, just, you know, you have one of these models, you'll have it for 10, 20 years, and you'll get some really good life out of it. Okay, I'm going to run today's running session at full volume without any commentary until the end so that you can compare the different sound offerings. So let's get going.
Okay, how did you find that? Which one of those sound offerings would you prefer? Uh, certainly my preference would be the second one, the custom one. But uh, please uh, leave your feedback in the comments and we'll take it from there. Okay, so now we're going to take a summary. Uh, so there have been 28 variants in total since uh, 2003 uh, in a number of different liveries. The BR Blue, the BR Blue Large Logo, uh, which we've seen in the review today, uh, BR Green, the Network Southeast and Rail Freight Grey. Uh, the latest models, the 2020 models, uh, these are coming in the GBRF uh, Blue livery and we'll talk about those separately later. All of the models come with the five pole skew wound motor uh, with all wheel pickup and dual bogey drive. That gives them the fantastic performance that uh, we become familiar with the class 50. They're all eight pin DCC and the majority of them are DCC ready uh, with the exception of these two models, the 2802XS and the 2901XS, which had DCC sound fitted. And the latter again was the one that we did the unboxing with today. The extra features on these models, uh, the directional head headlighting, the working fan, which was on the models up to the 2016 timeframe, the opening cab doors, uh, the metal sprung buffers and the detailing kit. All of the models weigh in at a very heavy 768 grams. And the retail selling price, uh, depending on whether you've got sound or not, uh, will be in the region of 99.95 to 29.95, uh, typically sold through um, eBay or uh, secondary vendors. As you, in, in general, you can't buy these new right now. Even the 2020 versions were sold out on pre-order. So a couple of things to watch. There was a DCC socket problem on some of the early, earlier variants. I've put a link and that'll be in the description. So it's worth doing a quick check on Google in case uh, a model that you're looking at, perhaps buying second hand, uh, was one of these if you were looking to install DCC. Essentially, the socket was installed the wrong way around, and uh, and so you have problems, some problems with it. So, just a, a something to check if you are uh, putting DCC into one of the older models. Another thing, when using TTS uh, on these models, uh, this is a very heavy locomotive, and for the earlier models up to 2016 that had the rotating fan, that fan puts a very big load on the motor and a big load on the decoder from a, a power consumption perspective. So if you start running that with a large rake at high speed, you will blow your TTS decoder. So uh, the recommendation there is to, to disconnect uh, that rotating fan if you're going to run with a TTS decoder. So just something to watch for. So the scoring, and uh, this scoring applies to the pre-2020 models, so it excludes the GBRF models, and I'll talk about those in the next slide. Running performance is a five star. This is an excellent performing model. The all-wheel pickup, the, the, the motor, um, and the dual uh, drive, th this is a really good motor, and it gives you excellent performance. So it's a five star, and it has been from day one. Appearance and details, four and a half star. I think the main criticisms I have here is the roof is a little bit bland and could with do with some additional detail and the bogies do look like they they need a retooling uh, so there's a I think an, an additional level of detail that could be added at the bogey level but you know still a very strong score these are nice looking models and in and uh, and in certainly for the pre 2020 models uh, very nice paint registration and an overall good quality finish um, my score for the sound is a three star that's for the the factory fitted sound version that uh, we did the running session on I think it isn't the best. Uh, there's quite a whine in that sound. I think you'll probably pick that up in, in, in the video uh, and it could be bettered. Uh, so one of the recommendations I think going forward would be to give better provision for a larger speaker and uh, and maybe use a, something like a Lock Sound 5 decoder with a new set of sound files. And that, if they were to produce a new sound version, that would be the recommendation. Extras and variants is four star. There's a lot of little extras on this. Um, some of which are a little bit superfluous. I think the opening doors and, and the rotating fan, we could probably live without, in all honesty. Well, there's a lot of different var variants of the range over the years, so I'm giving a four star, which I think is a reasonable score there. Again, this applies to the pre-2020 version. The build quality on these has been very good, and, uh, and I think the packaging has been good as well. Uh, so giving a four and a half star, um, and we'll talk about the 2020 version after this. Price-wise, four star. These are again, you you'll have to buy them uh, secondhand, and you may have to pay a premium for them uh, to get them in in you know, good condition. I think the two models I have here are in very good condition, excellent. I did get them at a pretty kind of reasonable price, around the 
160 uh, pound mark, which was, you know, really, really good. I think you'll find it very difficult to get a particularly a sound enabled model at that price. I think you're typically going to be looking at the 200 to 230 range for that. Um, so price value has, has been pretty good. Again, it's a little bit different for the 2020 model. I'll talk about that again. Overall, a four and a half star and a highly recommend, highly recommendation on these. Uh, these are really good models they've lasted the test of time i mean we've just been running with the 2003 model here as part of this video and it is in excellent condition excellent running condition it's credit as well to its owner obviously but uh, you know that just gives you the longevity of this, this these, these these are excellent performers uh, they look good and um i think they're you know you won't be disappointed with them and uh, i think they're pretty pretty well are a must own i think certainly for people who are modeling that diesel era you will be looking for one of these in probably the large logo livery or the uh, uh the nse liveries now it's a slightly different story for the the 2020 models so let me get into that so these are the two models uh, the 3882 and the 3883 uh, now, these were sold out on pre-order. I wasn't able to actually get one of these to, to formally review, so I'm relying on other people's reviews and feedback on forums, etc. Uh, but even if you look at the photographs of these models compared to the prototype, the, the colour rendition on these is not good. And uh, a lot of purchasers have e expressed disappointment in terms of that. And even if that wasn't bad enough, the registration of the paintwork hasn't been so good either certainly worse than you would see on the pr the preceding models from earlier years. Uh, the packaging is a bit different and that may have led to some problems with um, parts falling off um, and some issues that people have got with models they've received. Things like their buffers are, are, are falling off, parts of the underside detail falling off. And a, a general problem on these seems to be that the doors have not been fitted correctly and they don't close fully. And this seems to be across the board on these models. The price is a pretty hefty 160 to 180 and that's not been heavily discounted below that and that's what you're going to have to pay. Again, most of them have been sold out on pre-order. And interestingly enough, with all these issues, you can't find a reference to this locomotive on the Hornby website now. It's as if it never existed. So there's no ability to go in and read any reviews and there aren't actually that many reviews out there. But I'm giving you this warning. I'll put some links in the description to some of the, the, sl the review slots that I've gone to and used for this. But generally, this does not look to be a very good model. To me, it looks a little bit toy-like, the, the shade of blue that's been used on it. I don't like it. Um, and it doesn't represent uh, the GBRF livery, I don't believe. Now, some people are still happy to just get those models in that livery. They, they like the, the modern livery and they're kind of living with it. But I would say these are not up to the standard of the Class 50s that we've seen in earlier years. So just take that note. Uh, it's nearly impossible to buy them anyway, but you might see them on eBay and uh, please uh, take a look at those links I've put in the description before making a purchase. Okay, so overall the Class 50 I think is a, is a notable model from Hornby. It's one of their best diesels, if not the best diesel they've ever produced. I think it's coming up to its 50, 20th anniversary now from Hornby. And this is my little wish list for that if they were to produce some special editions for the 20th anniversary. I think certainly the, the large logo and the NSE liveries are the kind of mainstream liveries for this. Certainly the quality issues, we would want to see those on, on, on these models. I think having a separately controllable cab light and driver would be excellent to add. I think there's a lot of space in this model. It's a big model, so there's no excuse but to make some room for a larger base speaker. This is the same size as, say, the, the Hattons. It's the same weight as the Hattons Class 66. There's no reason this can't have an equivalent level of good sound that that particular model has. You need the yellow snow plows uh, for the blue and NSE liveries. Uh, we should like to see that. I think there is um, uh, certainly a desire to add some more roof detail. I think this would be good. I think if they could do something there, uh, the roof is a little bit bland. You can see that the weathered version actually improved from having the bit of, bit of weathering on it, made the roof actually look a bit more interesting and the chimneys actually stood out more. Uh, but as it stands uh, in a pristine, it is a bit bland. Uh, I think the open doors could be dropped uh, if that helped manage the overall production costs. Uh, now there'll be probably some retooling involved with that. And I think the bogies could do with the retooling as well. I think there's lack of definition on the bogies from a detail perspective and this could do with some improvement. Now, etch nameplates is something that people are very disappointed in not seeing on this model. And as I say, 
uh, maybe have a factory fitted uh, high quality DCC option would be very nice uh, with a really large bass speaker and a Luxon 5 decoder and some good good uh, recordings uh, would really round out what would be a, um, a flagship model I think for Hornby if they were to look at it. So on this particular one if you are interested in, uh, in, in this feedback please uh, drop a like on this video put a comment in terms of any of the items, additional items you might like to see or different items you might like to see in that particular model. And when I get to 100 likes on this model, I'm actually going to uh, put a, a note together to Hornby and actually send them, send it to them with the recommendations that I've got from yourself and what I've got here, uh, a consolidated view of those. And maybe, maybe we might see a 20th anniversary model. Maybe they're thinking about it already, but I'd certainly like to prompt them in terms of some of these items that we would like to see. Uh, so please give your feedback on this. Give your feedback in general if you've got a class 50, if it's a class that you like. If you've had the 2020 version, would welcome feedback on that as well. Uh, that seems to have been a little bit of a disappointment for people, uh, which is unfortunate for this particular model. OK, thanks for joining today's review. Uh, please drop a like on the video if you found this interesting. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber and we'll hopefully see you on the next one. And in the meantime, happy modeling. <laughs>